Hello. We're going to continue our study of fast simulation of heat transfer using C Sharp and OpenCL. Previously, we talked about some prerequisites for this video tutorial, and we gave an overview of heat conduction. In this video, we are going to talk about discretization of the heat equation and how to use this discretization to simulate the heat transfer in the plane plate. So let's come back to the heat equation. And remember that we had a partial derivative with respect to time and the Laplacian of the temperature distribution. So how do we go about trans transforming this equation into something we can simulate? Well, Let's, let's work with the, with the equation. We have the time derivative of u with res, uh, ta, the derivative of u with respect to time equals to alpha times the Laplacian of u, which is, let's expand this term. It's alpha times the derivative of u, the second derivative of u with respect to x, the x coordinate, the x space coordinate, plus the second derivative of u with respect to the y space coordinate. Now, um, we want to transform these uh, partial derivatives into discrete values. And this approximation is done by using Taylor's expansion. So we use the Taylor expansion of u with respect to time when we know that the derivative of u with respect to time is um, the value of the temperature in the next instant minus the current value of temperature divided by delta t, the time interval. This is the partial derivative of u with respect to time. Uh, using the Taylor expansion and expanding the first derivative of u with respect to the uh, space coordinates, we can get to the discretization of the of the function, the temperature distribution function u, with respect to space, and we get to the, to these formulas here. We get that the second derivative of u with respect to x is u at x plus delta x minus two times the current u at x, y, plus the u in the previous uh, um, block. All this divided by delta x squared. And same thing for, for the y coordinate. So this is a discrete approximation of the continuous value of the second derivative, the second partial derivative. What we're uh, we're interested in evolving the system with time. So we want to compute the distribution of temperature u in the instant t plus delta t in all points x, y. So how do we do that? Well, we need to rewrite the first equation so that if we um, use this delta t and send it to the next to the other, to the right side of the equation here, we have that the distribution of temperature in the next instant of time equals the pre, the current distribution plus delta t, which is the time step we're taking, times alpha, the conductivity, times the Laplacian, which we we are going to approximate using these two equations here. Well, um, up to this point it might seem a bit, a little bit of too many formulas. This is the math and the partial differential equation. So the physics and math are going to stop here. And I'm going to show a demonstration of how to go about computing, numerically computing these values using the computer. So what's an algorithm to solve this problem? Okay, so now let's suppose that this grid is our entire plate and that the values here are values of temperature in each little piece of this plate. So we see that the top 
and the bottom of this plate are kept at 100 uh, Kelvin, 100 Celsius, whatever. And we see that the rest of the plate, the interior of the plate, initially is set to zero, zero degrees. The temperature is zero inside the plate. So what we want to do is compute what will be the temperature distribution along this plate in time 0 plus 0 0.01, which means we want u of current time plus dt, which we saw that is the current value of t in, the, in that position plus the value of alpha times dt times the Laplacian of u in, the given, in a given point. So let's compute the next value of this point here. See, we cannot compute the next values in this point here or this point here because we'd, go, we'd have to go off bounds to fetch values. And this is not possible. So we're going to discuss the, the values in the boundaries later. But basically we need to have a function that tells us every time what's the temperature distribution along these boundaries. We just consider the, these values to be fixed in this demonstration. So in this cell, what's going to be the next value of this cell in the next instant of time? Well, we start by computing uxx, which is 0 minus 2 times 0 the current value plus 0 all that divided by 0 0.5 which is the uh, space step squared of course this turns out to be 0 so now let's compute uyy uyy is 100 minus 2 times 0 plus 0 divided by 0 0.5 squared, which is 400. Now we're ready to compute u of in the next instant of time. It's going to be 0, the current value, plus 1, the value of alpha, times 0 0.01, which is the time step, times uxx plus uyy, which, as we saw, is equal to 400. So the next value of this cell is going to be 4. Now let's iterate. You see that the values here and here were all set to 4. So this is the configuration of the plate, of the distribution of temperature in the plate in the next time step. Now let's, let's suppose, just to give you another example, that we wanted to compute the value of the temperature in this cell, which is going to be mapped to this cell. And, so, and we know that the neighboring temperatures are 10, 20, 30, and 40. So let's go about the same procedure. We know that uxx is equal to 10, oops, equals to 10, minus 2 times 0 plus 30 divided by 0 0.5 squared which is equal to 40 divided by 0 0.25 which gives us 160. So we know that uxx equals 160. We now need to compute the partial derivative, the second derivative, with respect to y. Let's do it. Uyy is equal to 20 plus, I'm sorry, minus 2 times 0 plus 40, 40 divided by 0 0.5 squared. And this gives us 80 
divided by 0.25, which is, I'm sorry, it's 60 divided by 0.25, which is equal to 240. So we now have the values of uxx and uyy. And we know that the sum uxx plus uyy equals 400. Now let's use this and compute u of t plus dt. It's going to be equal to u, which is 0, plus 1, uh, the value of alpha, times 0 0.01, the time step, times <coughs> uxx plus uyy, which we know is 400. So this all turns out to be equal to 4. And that's just a coincidence. What's important is the method of calculating. This is the algorithm we're going to implement to compute the, the temperature distribution in the plate. Of course, this discretization is very coarse. We're going to have a discretization of 400 per 500 uh, pixels, or 300 per 400 in my laptop. So just so it runs a little bit faster using my laptop. But it's still remarkable that we can get 400 uh, iterations per second in a laptop computer. So now let's iterate. We see that from this configuration, the next time step would have this distribution. So in this example, we can uh, uh, iterate to this side. So considering that this is the configuration, what's going to be the next configuration? Well, we click iterate here and we see what's the distribution of temperature. What would be the next distribution of temperature in the plate? So this is a trick we're going to use when we go to the OpenCL implementation. We're going to use this uh, cell, this variable, one variable, as the current values, and then we'll calculate the next values. After that, we'll set this, this one to be the current set of values, and we'll use this one to hold the next values. By doing this, we avoid the need to keep allocating more and more memory, and we don't need to go collect garbage or anything like that. So let's do a few more iterations here. And we see that slowly, very slowly, it it's converging to um, a given distribution, to some distribution. Okay, let's get back to our presentation here. Now, I hope, I hope you had a good uh, overview of the algorithm we're going to use to simulate the heat equation. In the next video, we're going to take a small detour and take a look at how to, um, take a look on how to share OpenCL and OpenGL objects and how to map intensity values to color values. Thank you.